Hey, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel. Have you ever heard anyone say ingredient lists don't lie? But then have you also heard somebody say ingredient lists don't matter? I've also heard people say formula is king. Then I also hear somebody else say you won't know until you try it. Pretty confusing, huh? I've heard both points of view and I actually do agree with both of them. You know, I do feel like ingredients lists tell us a lot of information about a product, but I also agree Agree that it's not the whole story about how a product works. But are we really expected to be cosmetic chemists in order to figure out if a product is worth purchasing or not? No, and I don't think that we all have unlimited dollars to try every skincare product that interests us, right? When people say, just try it. No, so that's what today's video is all about. I wanna talk about the things you can tell from the ingredients list, because as consumers, that's really our gateway into finding out a little bit more about a skincare product before we even put it on our face. I do think it's an important tool in our toolbox and knowing what you can and can't tell from an ingredients list is incredible incredibly important to making smart decisions for you. So if you guys are so ready to find out all about ingredients lists, give the video a big thumbs up and let's get started. So we can learn what ingredients are in a product from the ingredients list. I know this seems really basic, but let's just start at the beginning, right? The ingredients list tells us what is in a product. Now, some of us know certain ingredients do really well with our skin, so we might be seeking those out. If you have specific goals like anti-aging, brightening, anti-acne, you know, you can really narrow that down to certain well-proven ingredients and find those in your skincare products, right? It just helps us really target the skincare that's gonna give us the best chance at success. But I think what's really important with ingredients list is being able to tell what's in there because there's things that we want to avoid. If you have sensitivities or allergies or just certain ingredients that you know don't agree with your skin, the ingredients list is going to tell you if that ingredient is in there or not. But what you cannot tell from an ingredients list is what ingredient your skin is sensitive to. When you try a new skincare product and you get a bad reaction like congestion, acne, redness, irritation, of course your first instinct is to look at that product and read the ingredients list, trying to figure out what the heck bothered your skin, right? It is potentially possible that you might nail down what bugged your skin, but at the end of the day, it is not a foolproof method. You cannot like reverse engineer the ingredients list to figure out what's bothering your skin. And I think that that is when people get a lot of false positives about what they think their skin is reacting to. Because if you've had, you know, products in the past that have bugged your skin, like Serum X, and now Serum Y is messing around with your skin, it is tempting to look at those two ingredients lists and see if there's any common ingredients and that is potentially the trigger to your skin. This can be helpful. Again, information, you can definitely get some from this method, but I do think that it's very um, possible that you might come away with the conclusion that your skin is sensitive to a very common ingredient like glycerin, which is in lots of different skincare products and very likely is in Serum X and Serum Y. And it's totally possible that your skin is sensitive to glycerin, but I'm just saying like, it's just not foolproof, you know what I mean? It's just not, it's not going to be a surefire way to figure out what ingredients your skin is sensitive to. And another like huge reason why it's not a foolproof method is because the ingredients don't act on their own in the formula. This is where formula is king starts to come in because you cannot tell from an ingredients list how that one specific ingredient is interacting with the other ingredients in the formula. Because ingredients are not monoliths. They don't just stand alone and just do their own individual work in their little bubble in the product. They interact with everything else in the formula. It's chemistry. And there are gonna be other ingredients that can stabilize it, that can can enhance it, that can make it work better, that can make it do all different kinds of things. So just looking at a single ingredient is not going to tell you that much information about what that ingredient is doing in a formula. And a great example of this is 
alcohol, ethanol or denatured alcohol. It gets a reputation for being drying on the skin and when it's present in a formula, it just strips all the, the moisture from your face. That is not necessarily true. Just the presence of alcohol alone does not mean that the product is going to dry your skin out. Alcohol can be used in a lot of different ways and it's not just to strip your skin of moisture. Alcohol can actually be used as a penetration enhancer. So if you have like a really great star ingredient that maybe isn't really good at getting deep into your skin, if you formulate that ingredient alongside of something like alcohol, which helps the penetration of a formula, you might be able to get that really beneficial ingredient deeper into your skin where it can be more beneficial and show you better results. One of the best examples of alcohol being a goodie in skincare is sunscreens. You know, alcohol can definitely help sunscreens dry down on your skin a lot faster than if it wasn't in the formula. And that's really important because sunscreen is all about, you know, creating a film on your skin, a protective film. And if it's not completely dry, if it's taking a really long time to dry, if you put your makeup on, on top of it before it's dry, you might be interrupting that film, kind of breaking it up and not getting like that really good coverage across your face. It's gonna be patchy. Or if you like, you know, pull your shirt over your face and it like goes across your face, you might be interrupting your sunscreen if it's not dry. So alcohol is great because you don't have to wait around for 20 minutes for your sunscreen to dry on your face before, you know what I mean? You can go out in the sun and stuff. Dimethicone is another great example. It is an ingredient that is known for clogging the pores because it's very hard to clean off of your skin. It forms like a really heavy barrier on your skin that is really difficult to wash off. If you don't wash it off properly, it's going to clog your pores. So if you do get that result with a product, you might be quick to blame dimethicone in the product. But the thing is dimethicone, it's all about how it's been formulated because it can be formulated with emulsifiers that help dimethicone get along better with water, which allows the dimethicone to wash away from your skin effortlessly but it's really difficult for you know just a lay person aka not a cosmetic chemist right to look at an ingredients list see dimethicone and then go and look for emulsifiers and be able to tell if those emulsifiers are helping that dimethicone wash off of your skin faster it's just not something that we can tell from just reading the ingredients list alone an ingredients list can tell you what ingredients are working well for your skin now i never advocate for just cherry picking single ingredients because as I said before ingredients don't just act on their own they interact in an entire formula but all that being said throughout trying you know different skincare products you might come to the conclusion that maybe your skin likes mugwort for calming and soothing a lot better than centella it's just one of those things that works a little bit better for your individual skin or you notice the products you've used that have arbitin in it brighten up your skin a lot more effectively than the products with just nice cinnamide in it. So that's what an ingredients list can tell us. You know, if no ingredients list existed on our skincare products, we would have to choose between like the ultimate brightening serum and the super glowy serum with no other information. Like we just really would not be able to make smart choices for us and gathering all the information that we know about our personal experience with skincare. Those names don't help us. So ingredients lists really help us kind of like get away from just the names and the marketing and really start to concentrate on what we have, you know, found through our own experience to work really well for our skin. But here's the thing, <laughs> as much as we can find the ingredients on that list and see, yeah, my skin really likes Arbitin, you cannot tell from that ingredients list how effective that particular ingredient is going to be in the overall formulation. How an ingredient performs in a skincare product is going to come down to the formula, how all the ingredients play together. And a really great kind of like analogy for this is actually like baking a cake because maybe you want to bake a really delicious decadent chocolate cake and you've got really good premium chocolate, you've got all of the great like farm fresh eggs and you've got the milk and you got it all you know what i mean you've got it all but maybe you forgot the baking powder it's not going to end up being a cake because you have no rising agent which is essentially what's going to make your cake a cake you're just going to end up with a flat chocolate disc 
So you can have all the good stuff, but if you don't have the formula right, if you don't have the recipe right, it's not going to turn out perfect. And that's exactly what skincare formulation is about. It's not just about the premium chocolate, it's about having that and the baking powder too. So here's some skincare examples for you. Let's say we have two products that contain the exact same percentage of retinol in them, you know, retinol A and retinol B. Because they have the exact same percentage of the active ingredient retinol, you would assume that they're going to perform exactly the same way for your skin, right? Wrong. They could actually perform wildly different from each other because retinol is an ingredient that can sometimes be a little bit unstable in formulations, meaning that it could have like, I don't know, like we'll just say 1% of retinol, but it might actually become 50% less effective by the time it hits your skin because it's starting to degrade in the bottle. And that is all about how it's been formulated. So you might have 1% of retinol in retinol A, but retinol B has 1% of retinol that has been encapsulated, helping to stabilize it, keeping it efficacious so that when you apply it, you are actually getting 1% of retinol, not getting unstable degraded retinol that is 50% less effective. That is how formulation works. And that is why we can't always tell how a product is going to perform just by looking at the ingredients alone. Something you can kind of sort of guess from an ingredients list is the percentages of the ingredients being used because you probably know the ingredients list is pretty regulated and you can't just list it in any order that you want to. They do have to be listed in a certain order. Now US and European regulations say that any ingredient above 1% needs to be listed in the amount highest to the amount lowest. So there will be, you know, whatever is in the product the most is going to be at the top of the ingredients list, and then it's going to go in descending order. So based on those regulations, you know, the first kind of like five, six ingredients, that's making up the most of the skincare product, right? Because if it's the highest percentage to the least, at the top of the ingredients list is gonna be what's making up the majority of the skincare product. Now, anything that is less than 1% can actually be listed in any order. Um, so that's where it can get a little bit confusing towards the end, um, but you can see how you can sort of gauge what's going on percentage-wise in, in the skincare product. So I wanna just put a quick disclaimer on this before we go any further. I did say US and European regulations. Do not try this method with your K-Beauty products. <laughs> Those are a different different set of regulations. So I see a lot of people using this method, especially to call out shady marketing tactics. Um, if the star ingredient is in the name or it's very present in the marketing claims about the product, you know, it's very easy to turn that product over and look for said star ingredient and you find it all the way at the bottom of that product's ingredients list. And you're like, that's shady because it's not even being used at like, you know, 1% or above. So that's shady, right? And like, maybe, maybe it is, but here's the thing. You might be able to guess the percentage being used in the skincare product from the ingredients list. But what you cannot tell is how that percentage translates to effectiveness within the formula. So one of the running themes of the video has definitely been how, you know, ingredients don't stand alone. They work in a formula. And, you know, the percentage of an ingredient is only going to be as efficacious as that formula allows it to be. It is really about everything coming together. So some things to consider, they could be using a solution, allowing them to make the marketing claims that it contains 80% of star ingredient. But when it comes down to how it needs to be labeled per regulations, you'll quickly find out that that 80% solution, that 80% star water maybe, right, is the ingredient plus water plus preservatives. And so those ingredients get split up and they are listed a little bit differently, leading you to assume that there's like none of the star ingredient in there, but it's actually been formulated in like a solution. You know, honestly, it's not about chasing high percentages though either, because sometimes really low percentages are actually really effective. Let me tell you, I will take 0.1% of matacasticide over 80% of centella extract any day of the week. 0.1%? Yeah. Why do I say that? Because 
Matacasicide is the active compound in the centella plant that is super, super soothing. When you use centella extract, what's soothing your skin is the compound matacasticide. So I'll take a tiny amount of that, what's actually working in the centella, over like an 80% watery centella extract. Percentages do not tell you the whole story. Another ingredient that works at very low percentages is retinol, one of the top active skincare ingredients out there. So here's just like a really quick example for you. Retinol at 0.02% is kind of like that beginner strength. That's the one that's definitely going to start to show you some benefits. Now, a moderate strength retinol can be anywhere between 0.04% and 0.1%. And the most like potent retinol available on the market, super, super strong, 0.3% all the way up to 1%. So it's actually really effective in very low concentrations. So you can see there is a lot that you can get from an ingredients list. They are not completely useless. Ingredients lists tell us a lot about products and it will help us make a decision about what products we are maybe interested in trying. But ingredients lists are not the full story. Formulation is really important. Now, side note, one way that you can use the ingredients list is to actually check marketing claims. And um, we did talk of, about a few earlier in the video, but I wanna point out another thing that you should check when it comes to marketing claims against the ingredients list, and that's the use of derivatives. When a, you know, a product is saying it is the star ingredients serum, and you look at the ingredients list and it's star ingredient derivative, and you're like, that's just not quite lining up. That doesn't mean that derivatives are bad necessarily, but when you're claiming to have pure vitamin C and you're using a derivative, definitely there's a disconnect there. And um, I think that that just helps us, you know, become better consumers. So I just want to point out a few where the names don't match up with the ingredients list. And it's very easy for you to figure this one out. So Naturium has a 10% azelaic acid serum, and it actually isn't using azelaic acid. It's using an azelaic acid derivative. Cosrx has a retinal serum. I've talked about this before on my channel, but they're using a retinal derivative. Mad Hippie Vitamin C, super, super popular. It's not pure vitamin C. It is a derivative. I am not saying that these products and these marketing and brands are shady by any means, but like I said, this is another thing that we can use the ingredients list to empower us as consumers making the right choices for our skin. So we did learn that an ingredients list cannot definitively tell us how a product is going to work on our individual skin. You just gotta try it in order to know for sure. But I will tack on to that, as much as that is true. I do believe that using the ingredients list, you can actually make smarter choices about what products you ultimately end up trying. You know what I mean? And you can definitely increase your potential success rate with the products if you use the ingredients list to your advantage. I think it comes down to understanding how both work, what ingredients list can tell you and what it can't. And by the way, another thing that we didn't cover about what an ingredients list cannot tell you is the source of those ingredients. You know, just looking at the ingredients list, we may not be able to tell if, a, you know, an ingredient is vegan, which is a really important thing for a lot of people, if it's sourced from an animal or not, or if it's a synthetic. We can't necessarily tell that from an ingredients list. We can't tell if the ingredients have been ethically sourced or sustainably sourced. We cannot tell that from an ingredients list. It's just not information that's available to us. Another super huge, really important thing that you cannot tell from an ingredients list is texture. <laughs> I'm like the texture queen, you know, I love textures. It's one of the most fundamental, you know, experiences of skincare for me personally. And I'm, I can make kind of a guess, but it's not necessarily going to be right just by looking at the ingredients alone. Textures come down to formula, formula is not something that we can you know, predict from an ingredients list. We just can't. So as you can see, it's complicated. It's nuanced. There's a lot of things to consider. An ingredients list definitely does matter, but 
at the end of the day, it is not the whole story. An ingredients list is one tool in your skincare toolbox, but there are other tools that you have that can help you make educated decisions about what skincare you are personally going to purchase. Reading reviews online is super helpful. You know, reading through the ingredients list help, but reading through other people's experiences can be invaluable. You know, influencers, it is my mission on this channel to help you make the right choices for your skin by sharing my experience. You know what I mean? The good, the bad, and the ugly. I hope that by sharing super detailed reviews, texture swatches, ingredients lists, my experience will help you decide if something is worth it or not for you. Finding somebody that you trust online is super important. Finding somebody that has a similar skin type to you, similar skin values and philosophy to you is really important. And I also say diversify the voices that you're listening to. Have a couple of different influencers, maybe have some dermatologists in there. Maybe if you're on the science side of things, get a couple of people with the chemistry or cosmetic formulation background. All of those people are going to empower you to make really good choices for your skin. And again, at the end of the day, sometimes you just got to take the leap and just try the product out. So I'm curious to know, are you really big on ingredients lists or are you more of a like try it and see type of person? Let me know in the comments box below. If you love the video and you haven't hit subscribe and you made it this far in the video, please do consider hitting subscribe. I release lots of new content throughout the week, all skincare related. So don't forget to turn on notifications so you're never out of the loop. And quick announcement. I'm also on TikTok now. <laughs> I've been super like resistant to it. I was like, I don't want to go on there, but I actually went on there and I've been enjoying myself. So if you want to see even more skincare content from me, come join me on TikTok. If that's your thing, I'll put a link to my profile file in the info box below. I hope you guys are healthy, happy, and safe. I cannot wait to see you in the next video, and I hope you go out there and conquer this day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.